what you know, what are you doing? Why is this important? Um, it wasn't until like the second to last day, and they had this um this like website and tool we could use that that told you like if you had invested X amount, you get to have this, and or you would have had this much money. So being curious and and a board intern, I found out that my parents had only invested about eighty three dollars a month from the time I was born to the time I did that in two thousand ten that I would have had eight hundred and ten thousand dollars. $810,000 is the amount I could have had if I only, or if my parents had only invested about $83 a month in Apple. And that was it. And at that point, I was I was shook. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, I have two other quick ones. This is pulled from your tweets. Uh, that was a good icebreaker. I appreciate that one. So mm -hmm. I just, it's a, I guess a two-part question. Crypto investors, genius are insane. So you have a tweet that says the problem with Elon Musk, Mark Cuban, and Dogecoin hashtag is that it provides a false sense of legitimacy. Don't forget these are billionaires when Dodge eventually crashes and you say, and it will. They will and be it, fine. And it did. <laughs> <laughs> yo, actually, yo, you dropped this in February 2021. So I'm going to get your credit out there, man, because I like when people predict correctly. So uh, do you still feel that way? Crypto investors, genius are insane. Yeah, I mean, so there's a there's a legitimate case for crypto, and that's fine. But when it comes to, you know, these, these joke coins or these meme coins that people just hop on just for the sake of hopping on because a billionaire said it, you got to be careful about that stuff. Like Elon Musk got up on SNL and admitted that it was trash. Right. So yeah. Then it dropped like 20% the next day. <laughs> right. Right. And it, and it's been falling ever since that day and right. has not really recovered since. Um, but you have people who weren't billionaires that, you know, didn't necessarily have all the basics of investing covered that were jumping into it. So, Hey, you know, look, I haven't paid my student loans. Let me put five, 6,000 in this thing and, and hope it does something right some people got lucky people who were in very early they got lucky they got out but the majority of people once it starts to become you know local news when you start seeing a local news segment yeah. it's, it's probably too late <laughs> right so that's what people did and they lost and now they're sitting around holding the bag trying to figure out when the next wave is going to come and it may it may not but you got to be real real careful about that stuff and for me it's always interesting when you see people jump into stuff like that but don't jump into like the basics. So I'll never forget I had a barber in New York City. Um, and he was, I'm not gonna, I guess I shouldn't throw his name out there, but he was he was investing in Bitcoin. It's like 2017 when it first shot up and they immediately crashed, yeah. like right after that, right? Yeah. And he was like, Yeah, you know, I've never done anything like this. I'm in this Bitcoin thing. If you're in Bitcoin, I'm like, You realize I'm a financial advisor, I work up the street, like. I'm like, you can do some, right? You can do some. Yeah. But like, have you ever thought about investing in like, I don't know, McDonald's or Target? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, man, it's too risky. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, how is Bitcoin not risky? Right. But, or how is McDonald's and like stuff you know and understand? How's the stock market too risky, but like Bitcoin not? And it's just like, you got to make sure that your risk, your like how you react to risk and how you react to, to losing matches your type your invested type so if you ain't scared fine right but if you want to be cautious and you want to be successful and consistent those two things do go together then you gotta you know spread your wealth out and be very measured about what you decide to do and i think you're going to say the same thing but i, I see i have to hit some of some of these whenever a financial planner comes on our advisor because i get yelled out in my community if i don't so we also need to talk about unfortunately meme stocks genius are insane your quote here is invest more into uh i don't know which company this says it's msft and then you say or them say why do you what do you think about amc and you say y'all leave me alone about amc <laughs> so what do you think about uh meme stock genius are insane <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, MSFT is, is Microsoft. That's a ticker symbol. So you okay. type in MSFT to almost anything, and usually Microsoft will come up. Okay. Um, AMC for those, we all know AMC theaters, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's the, I'm not a fan of mean stocks. Um, be, not because they just, oh, man, I don't know how to really describe it. Because <laughs> now, now I'm getting mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, so, you know, I know the feeling, you know, I know the feeling. Right, right. So, so no, I'm not a fan of meme stocks and primarily it's because it, it suckers people into um, backwards thinking about something. So usually a company rises in value because there is something, the company deserves to go up, right? For example, think of an airline. Pandemic is, is phasing out. Hopefully more people are traveling. The stock goes up. It deserves to go up. 
makes sense, right? There's, that's that's logical. Yes, More people shopping at Target, the price of Target stock goes up. That's that's logical, right? But in meme in in meme stocks and meme investments, it's backwards, where the stock starts to shoot up for no real apparent reason, and people just doing it and just jumping into it because it's a game, and you start to make up reasons behind the fact as to why it's going up. But it doesn't make sense. So like at the time, AMC had been falling for years. Like people had stopped going to the movies as much. And I will tell you right now, you're going to see stuff like Black Widow and a few other big holiday movies and stuff. But people are not ever going to go to the theaters at the same rate as they used to. That will never happen again, hmm. period. Why? Because I got Disney Plus. Why would I want to go step, step on sticky floors and pay $50 popcorn when I can watch in the cover of my house as many times as I want for one price? I'm, you may not ever catch me until the next Avengers. You're not going to catch me in the theater. Yep. So you're, you're always going to lose what it's 10% of people, 5%, whatever it is. You're not going to ever see that. However, the stock was up like a thousand percent. That don't make sense. That don't yep. make sense. Right. Uh, GameStop. People aren't going into buying physical games anymore. The new PlayStation, the new Xbox, they have digital editions where you never go in and trade in a disc anymore. It does not make sense for GameStop to take off in price because they don't make the games you can't trade in a digital game what 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 are you here for like it's the next uh next blockbuster because that's exactly what happened to blockbuster yeah. so you know meme stocks is, is backwards so people are making up reasons as to why it should go up and then pe they have to sit here and convince you to invest in it which is weird nobody ever came to me and said hey you should really invest in apple like you should put all your money in apple nobody ever told me that but when it comes to amc oh they come after you <laughs> and they will like force you and bully you and tell you why you should invest in something that when you really take a look at it, it don't make no sense. The one that I want to transition to is generational wealth uh, for the kids. And so you have a tweet here. This was from October 19. Actually, my son had enough money in his account to get a share of Apple. He's got a total of six stocks, which actually I think has grown since then. Right now, only at 18 months old. This is what generational wealth looks like. Talk a little bit about that, what you're doing for your son and why you're doing so. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with, with why I'm doing it. So it was 2010, long, long ago. It's, I mean, it, it is. It was a decade and some change now. <laughs> so decades ago, um, I had, a, <laughs> had an internship in, in New York. So it was my first time going to New York. I lived up there for three months for this internship, uh, which is interesting because I ended up living in New York for, like years later, which I never thought what was going to happen. But aside from that, I had a Wall Street internship. And when I tell y'all was the worst intern in the world, I was <laughs> terrible. Terrible, but was it was not all my fault. Uh, they didn't like really explain why it was there, what the stock market was, and like what you know, what are you doing? Why is this important? Um, it wasn't until like the second to last day, and they had this um, this like website and tool we could use that that told you like if you had invested X amount, you get to have this, and or you would have had this much money. So being curious and, and a bored intern, I found out that my parents had only invested about $83 a month from the time I was born to the time I did that in 2010, that I would have had $810,000. $810,000 is the amount I could have had if I only, or if my parents had only invested about $83 a month in Apple. And that was it. And at that point, I was, I was shook. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, this is what investing is? Why haven't you told me about this? What happened? Like, what do I do now with this information? And at that point, I wanted to make sure that my kids never had to ask that question is what if? What if dad had went back in time and invested in this thing? How differently would my life have been um, had I had that that type of money at this age? And that's what inspired me. Um, I said, you know, whenever I have kids, which at that point, I was like, this will never happen, right? <laughs> but whenever I have kids, I wanted to make sure they, they didn't have to, to have those types of questions or ever have that type of moment. So uh, for both my son and my daughter, he's three now. She'll be a year next month. Um, both have investment accounts, both invest in Apple as well as other things. Because um, I don't want them to ever have to have that moment. And um, thankfully now, there are so many more apps and options and opportunities that exist today that didn't exist then. Like, I don't even think my parents could have invested in Apple 
based on the way the stock market was back then. Like you had to have an advisor. There wasn't no, there were no apps <laughs> back then. You had to like call some shady guy on the phone to make that, that happen. <laughs> so I'm really glad that the, the world has changed since then. There aren't, you know, those fees and stuff they would have, would have had to pay. Um, so I had the opportunity to do it. And I just wanted to make sure that I was able to do that for my kids. So I have way more options um, when, when they're my age.